three, two, Mark. Uh, so the spring river is fed actually by a spring. Uh, that's where it starts. Can you right. tell us more about that spring uh, that feeds the spring river in Arkansas? Well, it's a very unique spring. It's the 10th largest spring in the world. It puts out 9 million gallons of water per hour. But when you come to Mammoth and look at the spring itself, it, it looks like a small pond. 70 foot below the surface is actually where the spring bubbles up out of the ground. And then it's pushed up through the top. And it's just very unique how much water comes out. It does come from underground rivers in Missouri, a river system. And then it flows out in Mammoth Springs. With a constant water temperature of about 58 degrees, this makes it very unique from the tailwaters. We are often confused with tailwaters, but this is a true spring-fed river, more like a chalk stream. So when people do come fish here, it's quite a bit different, the fishery itself being not a tailwater. With the tailwaters being about 45 degrees or so, and the 58 degree te temperature difference makes it very unique. It makes it one of the honestly one of the beautiful most prettiest rivers in the state of arkansas and one of the big things that's different with the spring itself is when the water comes out it has a green tint to it a hard green tint which is caused by the limestone in the in the actual underground rivers so the best thing about that is when you're fly fishing you can run real heavy tippet no need for light tippet here we usually run three four eggs so it allows us to really get away with a lot in the water clarity. There's a few places that run in with sinkholes that will flow into the spring up in Missouri. Those can affect the river conditions uh, if you're in flooding or something like that. But the spring river doesn't really flood itself. It just, a lot of runoff can create a unsavory condition, but because it's spring fed, it recovers quickly. Usually within two days, it clears up. It's the creeks that run in that can cause bad clarity and get the river up a little bit. But because of its uniqueness, we're usually fishing when others aren't. It's a great little place to get away when, you know, the other rivers are generating or something like that. Because the spring is spring fed, we do not have any generations. We have a few dams on the river, but to be honest with you, they're non-functional. Uh, back in the times of my forefathers, they were used for uh, hydro generators. Uh, the hatchery uh, at dam three that we have, there's a dam there, but it's just used to retain water for the hatchery. So you don't have to worry about standing out there listening to any uh, sirens go off or anything like that. The only thing we have to worry about is apocalyptic things. <laughs> Other than that, it's a nice place to fish. It's a very unique river system. It's truly a treasure of Arkansas that, you know, as a fly fishing guide on it for so long, I'm trying to promote it as just a beautiful scenic, scenic riverway. It's not really uh, waters that are navigable. So technically it's uh, considered more like a creek system than an actual river system. So uh, a lot of it's, it, it is, can be difficult to float and stuff with uh, different rafts, canoes. Uh, propelled motors aren't very often on our river. Uh, you can really tear a lower shaft out and try to run up and down it. So. We're doing all just floating rivers, just very unique, very shallow, a lot of pocket water. It's just, to be honest, it's made for fly fishing. Mm. It reminds me of whenever I run out to Wyoming or out in Idaho, it's like a small mountain stream, very unique. And we're so excited to have it in our, in our state with uh, such world-class fisheries like the white and little red. We have something different to offer with, with this river system. But we truly do love it. We love to tell people about it. We love to get more people fly fishing here. It's it's just something that needs more uh reckon it needs more people coming here to help us create a better fishery. I've been here for a long time, and this river is getting better every year for fly fishing destination. Uh, recently, we're working with Game and Fish to create hopefully catch and release areas in the future. At this time, we don't have any. It's just a put and take fishery. So. It's an excellent fishery. People come from all over the world to come up and fish it. And it, it is very unique. It's just not a tailwater. And I know that throws a lot of people being spring fed because of different techniques and the way we fish it. So I want to back up just a minute. I want to go back to the beginning. And you said, how deep is it? 
did you say 90 feet? It's a, uh, the spring comes out of the ground there in Mammoth Spring. The spring itself is 70 foot below the surface 70 and gushes feet. Okay. out of the ground. We had some Navy SEALs dive down and check that out, which was pretty cool. Oh, I bet. They yeah. only forced ourselves down to the mouth where it was actually coming out, and it was exactly 70 foot. So can you and see you, the bottom of it, or is that just way too? No, not at all. Okay, not at that's all. what uh, I'm for. Clarity in the spring is so terrible that you can't see much beyond three or four foot because of the uh -huh. green clarity. And that's because but if of you do come up exactly because uh, of the limestone. Yeah. If you do come up, we've got a place where you can walk around the hatchery. It's got mm -hmm. a great little scenic water uh, walkway and it's got all kinds of different information so everybody can make themselves familiar with the Spring River. Okay. I guess I could tell you about the legend of the Spring River. There was an ancient Indian chief that moved yeah. through the area many moons ago. His Indian son passed away and he began to dig a burial site for him and water began to boil up and he said this water will run forever in memory of my son and that's the ancient indian legend of the spring river really huh. absolutely okay back in the, back in the 1800s is big industry uh from 1900 to 1920 mammoth spring was a big town industrial town because of the railroad system moving through and going by the spring itself uh -huh. it was a big deal now we're just kind of a tourist town and trying to bring commerce back, you know, with the yeah. infrastructure of the highways, it, it, it took a toll on us back in the 1950s. And so does the railroad still run through there? Absolutely. Okay. We I have a so. very active railroad. Uh, if you do end up on the river and have to walk the tracks, the river actually was used to build the, the, tr the actual railroad. So it runs uh -huh. all the way down the spring river, all the way, way down into Arkansas. But if you have to jump out of the river and jump on the tracks to run back to an access point, be very careful. That train runs every 30 minutes some days. Okay. And that would that be the same one that runs along the the white? I guess it could be, maybe. It could be. I know they're running from uh, up in Wyoming down to Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. They're bringing coal down from the up in from the Wyoming, western states hope, down yeah. there. Oh, okay. All right. Well, what do you say we kick this show off and uh, and then we're going to, I really want to get into this river because it's something totally different. So let's go ahead and kick this thing off from high atop the world headquarters, the Southeastern Fly. This is the Southeastern Fly podcast. Subscribe or follow uh, wherever you listen to your podcast. And if when you get a second after you listen to this, text it to a friend and let them hear about it. Uh, this is going to be a really interesting episode today because it's a little bit different as far as uh, what Arkansas is known for. So who is our guest today on Southeastern Fly talking about the Spring River? He's the owner and head guide at uh, Spring River Flies and Guides. He's been uh, in Arkansas for over 20 years, I think. Uh, he's excited to tell us about fly fishing the Spring River near Mammoth Springs in Arkansas. You can find him at uh, www.springrivers.com spring river flies and guides and you spell out and please welcome to southeastern fly mark crawford mark thanks for stopping by thanks for having me yeah that, that's really so very interesting uh and i've got just a couple of little things about the spring river that i know uh that i that i didn't learn on our last talk uh that i've carried with me for i don't want to date myself but i bet it's been probably 20 years ago, I bet, uh, was the first time I ever saw it. Uh, so, and I know it by, uh, just traveling to the white, traveling to the North Fork. Um, uh, when we, we get a lot of drive bys. Yeah. Yeah. I drove <laughs> right over it and I thought, wow, that'd be cool. Uh, and then my cousin told me about fishing it, um, uh, out of a canoe somewhere and he didn't, he was fishing for trout. So I assume it was more upstream, but I want to get deeper into it. Uh, and so what what I know about it is this. We crossed it on the way to go into the white, or we did. I haven't been that way in a long time. We're kind of going a different way now. And we would cross it over that bridge in Hardy. Uh, and what I would see is a, several canoe companies and kayak places. But before you get to Hardy, though, I kept looking and thinking, boy, this looks like the perfect floating river. 
which it, which with the kayaks and canoes, I assume it is. And I'm sure there's good times and not so good times to come there, just like there is for inner tubes and kayakers and canoers and recreational folks. Absolutely. There are times that we would not want to be out there, but correct. We'll talk uh, about that later. Okay, good, good. Um, but I know there's a McDonald's just before you cross over that bridge at Hardy because two reasons. Why? Because we first we used to stop there, uh, as that was one of the places to get bad food. Uh, on our way yes. to the white. And the <laughs> second thing was the first time I ever saw a wooden drift boat was right there in that parking lot. And it was, it was a thing of beauty. I don't know whose it was. I never did. Right. I wasn't able to spot them in the, in the McDonald's or anything, but uh, the water for us looked clean the times that we passed over it. Uh, and it looked like it should have some good trout fishing, but the more we talked, the more I figured that the trouts or you had told me that the trout fishing is more upstream from crossing that bridge and Hardy and that bridge right. and Hardy down is kind of around there is kind of smally water, which I want to get into Absolutely. that too. Absolutely. So, so you've talked about the spring itself. So that's the source of the cold water for the trout portion. Uh, but tell us about the trout fishing, specifically the fly fishing. Uh, what's it like, like when you're wading the bottom and, and how's the access and the floating and what works and what does it, does it, let's get into the trout fishing portion of it first. Absolutely. We we have a lot of access points. It, you know, it's always hard to find a good place to go wading. We have about three or four uh, public accesses by, provided by Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. And all those can be located on a map you can download from agfc.com on the okay. resources. And it shows all the access points. But to be honest with you, some of the campgrounds have better wading. The wading on the Spring River is very unique. I can't stress enough. It's more like a cave bottom. We've actually had some geologists studying it right now. So it's very slick. Uh, we highly recommend felt or uh, metal cleats. Waiting staff will save your life out there. Mm. It, it can be tough waiting. Now, I say that, but the reason it's such a good fishery is because it's just a limestone chalk stream. You got little pockets the rainbows can hide in. Uh, most of the river is less than waist deep. Uh, myself, I love, I really enjoy tight lining techniques i like to throw a little nymph and watch something chase it mm, yes <laughs> now you can get away with fishing any way you want on the spring the best thing about it is it's not really technical it's uh it's stocked weekly so it makes it an easy fishery and then we have holdover fish we're always chasing up and down the river but we do have a little bit of weight in access in town a place called laster walk-in very famous it's right there in town, a big parking lot in the middle of a field. You can go in there. The waiting there is very slick uh, and very mossy, but it has some of the best little high sticking areas you can fish in. The fish are there, just fish in between the moss, and they'll come up and say hello. Mm. It's a great area there. Now, once you get below Laster, we do have an area about probably about two to three miles where you could uh, run a boat. Now, we have a lot of gentlemen that live around the area that like the bass fish, and that's where they mainly spend their time chasing largemouth. Uh, the native fish is smallmouth and largemouth, so a lot of guys go after that. And then that long, deep stretch runs into Dam 3. From Dam 3 down is some of the prettiest floating river water I have ever been on. It's very shallow. If you're not a good canoeist, it is a Class 2 river. Class two means you just kind of got to know what you're doing. Right. It, you got to get out there and be safe. I've pulled many a person out of the river and I'd rather not do that. Just be <laughs> careful out there. But uh, from dam three down, uh, you begin to go down. There's a access called Bayou Access Road. It's a access on the far side. It's uh, owned by the state, ran by AGFC. It's very popular. There's people come there from all over the world. I've seen countless different people down there. You can fish from the bank down there, or you can wade out into the river. The river's really small. Uh, I'd say it's 20 yards wide at times. Uh, we have to run small boats because you can't get much down it unless it's canoe, raft, or sometimes during the summer, inner tubes. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. We, hate, we hate to hook one of those. They give too good of a fight sometimes. <laughs> but uh, it's really important to, to whenever you're wading out there to be careful. It is. It can be sketchy waiting. Um, we love we love to fish up and down it, but during the summer we do have snakes. Uh, I've seen people 
really walk the water when they see one of our beautiful water snakes swim by. Yeah. They're not really harmful, but they'll scare you to death. And it's, you know, as far as fishing a river, it's, uh, it's so much fun because if you like to fish an indicator, you like to fish some nymphs under it, it's perfect for that. Some of the runs are really fast and the water is very turbulent. Ural nymphing can be fantastic in those stretches. But being an old soul like myself, I'm a wet fly fisherman. Mm. The river, it, it's just really easy to throw a fly across the river, mend it once, let that thing swing out. And I'm telling you, on the spring river, when that thing tails out and you strip it back a little bit, it's pure excitement. You're either going to have something chasing it or something's going to be trying to pull you in the river. Now, we're, we've really working on getting catch and release areas on the river, too. We, we've got a lot of different things we're working on to get better management. It is a put-and-take fishery. Um, with the new new age of everyone coming along and everyone being so educated on why they catch and release and the importance of it, I, I think it's a matter of time before we do get some catch and release areas, but this time we don't have any. No regs on the river whatsoever. No barbless, no nothing like that. You know, uh, honestly, I tell everybody, be a sportsman and do your part and try to keep our fish safe and alive. You know, they're, they're very hardy fish being raised in our hatcheries. It's on the, on the spring river. Excellent uh, campgrounds for camping, RV hookups. Uh, with the new Airbnb, Airbnb rage, you can find places all around here. I don't even know how to use the app, but... <laughs> I will say they're all up and down the river. You can get a house right on the river. They're very nice. And the campground suite, we really try to support them. Uh, we do have a lot of floaters during the summer months. Uh, they always close down around September till about the 1st of April. And we're the only guys out there. You know, right. it's just pure fly fishing extravaganza. Mm -hmm. And then during the summer, we do have to share the river. It's just a beautiful little place to go. Uh, recently, we started streamer fishing more. Now, unlike the White River, we don't have the browns like they do. Uh, Game of Fish is trying to plant browns in our river. I know where a big old brown is right now that we're always trying to catch, but they are ornery. I will definitely say our big fish are rainbow trout. Um, we were fishing the other day, and it's, it's just unbelievable how quickly the trout grow in our river. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually a 24-inch fish is going to be close to 10 pounds. And that's what really sets our river apart from other rivers is the food sources. The food sources in our rivers are really with sculpins, crawfish, minnows of 10 different species. Uh, I've seen leeches run right by me. That's not cool. Mm -hmm. But uh, due to it being so much warmer, we can use a lot of different food sources and a lot of different flies to imitate those things. Now, I say that. And I'm a nymphor. We have uh, caddis and mayflies hatch out daily because it's a constant water temperature. We really don't have seasonal hatches. It's just sun hits the water and out they come. Uh, we do have a hexagenia hatch that happens during uh, the late part of August. Hexagenias are sought after worldwide. They're a fun big mayfly to fish. And uh, it's actually become a big part of what we do. Uh, we actually fish the nymphs more than the dries. But when you got them big old mayflies in there, you got to get after them. Oh, absolutely. I do want to mention one food source that's in the river that a lot of people overlook. We have an abundance of black snails. The small little ice cream cone looking little black uh -huh. snails. One of my favorite fly patterns that was showed show to me many, many moons ago when I first started guiding is a simple little uh, woolly worm. Tie you a black woolly, burger, woolly booger and tear, tear that tear, tail right off yeah. of there and you got a woolly worm and yeah, that imitates our snails so well that that's a big part of what we use a lot of times definitely a woolly booger a nymph and an egg river okay no we don't throw too many great big streamers uh when we are doing that we're chasing either the walleye or the big browns and uh the river's actually full of walleye i've been on this river a long time we've caught maybe six or seven of them yeah. they're hard to catch I'm sure they're eating the rainbow trout that get stocked every week. <laughs> That's a hard fly to imitate, let me tell yeah, you. that one is, yes. <laughs> but the main thing is when people come up, we want to make sure they understand that the river is very slick. Be careful wading out there. It doesn't hurt to do a buddy system. Yeah, right, right. So you wouldn't go the traditional midge, 
that type uh, in your on your river like you would on the white. You know, there's the. That's a good question. That's a very good question. You could. Uh, I'll tell you what happened to me one day. An Orvis Orvis manager was up here. He's fly fishing. He said, "Mark, I want to take you out to dinner. I want to talk to you about some things." I said, "Let's go for it, buddy." I figure I get a free dinner. Absolutely. He shows up. He's fishing the indicator of midges. He said, Mark, I keep getting bites, but I can't land them. I said, welcome to the 10 subspecies of minnows and bait fish we have in the river. <laughs> now, absolutely. You can catch trout on midges on the river. Absolutely. We use them all the time, especially on the tough days. But do not be surprised when you start catching the other fish that are in the river. Yeah. Countless times we float the river, we see shad that are rising to the midges. Uh -huh. And every time I get somebody from out west, they're like, let's fish for those trout. And we'll go right. over and catch them. They're thread thin shad. They can go up to a pound, but they don't fight very good. Right, right. So we do kind of kind of use a little bit bigger nymphs a lot of times. Uh, I always tell people I tie from size fourteen to size six. That's my window. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> That's where I feel comfortable. And yep. then, uh, but but definitely you can catch them on eighteens and twenties. You just blow an egg or something, fish right on the bottom. Will work. But but me, I'm look always looking for that big old holdover. I'm looking for the thrill of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So you can't really beat an olive woolly booger. Yeah. I know people say that everywhere. Yeah. But we have uh, uh, so many sculpins in a river. We caught a sculpin one time that was over seven inches long. So, nice. you know, if if you're looking for streamer fishing, you want to imitate mm -hmm. the minnows and the sculpins that's in the river, and you might get in something you've never seen before. That's interesting. Okay. What about dry flies? Dry fly fishing. Uh -huh. If you ask somebody five years ago if there's any dry fly action on the river, they'd say absolutely not. Uh -huh. I will tell you, we have been doing hopper droppers, and they are starting to come up and hit dry flies. Okay. Most of the time, the whole problem is there's so much food that subsurface, it rise to a dry, doesn't really suit their fancy too much. So we do hopper droppers all the time, and it's especially when we're fishing for smallmouth. I got a popper dropper rig that can uh -huh. be amazing. I want to talk about I, the smallmouth a little bit later. For absolutely. Sure. I want to I want to touch on that specific topic too. Um, but we do a little dry fly fishing, but if you're going to do it, use it as an indicator. This is one of those rivers where they'll hit indicators. And if they're hitting your indicator, I'd put a big stimulator on, okay. uh, some kind of big hopper. Uh -huh. And we've had a lot of fun hitting them. Just remember there's a hook in it. So when they hit it, react. Right, right. <laughs> That's been a problem lately. Everybody watches them hit to dry and don't know what to do. <laughs> so you were talking about uh you're talking about the hex hatch. That really got my my attention because I have been on a hex hatch before and it's nothing but fun. But uh but sticking with the trout theme, we need to do that. There's a lot of anglers Absolutely. from surrounding states that are gonna come uh to fish that area. Or, or that the spring river, not just that area, but, uh, and really I'm kind of, we're all kind of envious of what Arkansas has going on as far as the way that they look at trout and understand that, okay, well, this is a, it's a destination. Uh, we're growing big fish. We are growing fairly healthy fish. We're growing a lot of fish and putting them in there, especially the rainbows, not just in the, in the spring river either. I'm talking about as a whole, throughout Absolutely. Arkansas they really see that but uh, talking more about the dries on that um and, and and more about the hatchery fish and I understand their hatchery fish for the most part I'm sure there's some some reproduction going on somewhere and that's always a big topic but I'd like to know more about the hatcheries in the area um and that feed the spring rivers. Let's talk about the hatchery. Absolutely. Just a minute Absolutely. So that we we can, have two main we can touch on that. Yeah. We got a federal hatchery up in town. I believe it was, uh, I wrote down all this good stuff about it. It was 1903 that that hatchery come online. Okay. It was started to be built in 1890s. We had a catastrophic flood that came through the area and we had some very influential men in the area that's trying to create a tourist, uh, destination. And when that uh, flooding happened, they lost a lot of game fish. So they decided to build a federal hatchery right in Mammoth Spring. Now, that hatchery now raises sturgeon and uh, hybrid stroppers for throughout the state and no longer raises trout very much. They keep some. But uh, that's one of the most, I think it's the oldest hatchery in Arkansas and one of the oldest ones in the United States, actually. 
they would race trout, put them on the railroad, and send them out and uh, to different people that wanted to purchase them. They actually sent out the eggs. They'd put them on a little uh, pe- piece of peat moss on a big block of ice, and they'd yeah. send them out. And if you was at the little train stop, you could buy yourself some trout eggs. No kidding. Now, they eventually realized they needed cold water. <laughs> so that didn't work out good in the neighbor's pond, if you might say. Right, right. So that didn't last long. But because of that hatchery being there, we've had trout in the Spring River since the early, early 1900s. My grandfather fished these waters and he called them bass. He didn't even know what they were. He just knew they tasted terrible and he didn't want nothing to do with them. Now, that that's the hatchery that has the whole history in town. And now in 1974, there is a group that moved here to create a hatchery that is two miles downstream of uh, the Dam 1 site at Dam 3. Dam 3 is the home of Jim Hinkle Fish Hatchery. Now, this hatchery is something else. Over the last probably year and a half, we put $7.6 million into this hatchery. This is the only cold water hatchery in Arkansas owned by the state. This is owned by the state, not a federal hatchery. This hatchery stocks all the rivers in Arkansas. And as a byproduct, I'm in there all the time making sure we get our fair share. <laughs> but to Jim Hinkle, uh, it, it's a very huge hatchery. Uh, they they were should be a capacity around a million or so that they can raise. Um, it's just freshly been rebuilt, so we don't even know the, the uh, capacity of it yet. We're getting it ramped up. A lot of people may not know our hatchery raises the tiger trout that have been found throughout Arkansas. They have a lot of uh, young ones right now that they're raising up, trying to get big. Now, most of these are stocked in the wide, but we hope to get some of them also. But this hatchery was built in 1974 uh, for raising actual trout for the grocery stores. Kroger owned it. And in 1982, we had a catastrophic flood that flooded the hatchery. In 1985, Kroger, Kroger donated the hatchery to the state of Arkansas, and it's been ran by the state of Arkansas ever since. And it's a truly unique hatchery. We're all the time in there uh, volunteering, helping the guys out. The new hatchery is supposed to be able to hold a lot more fish. Uh, in the front of the hatchery, they put black lights to kill some of the uh, harmful things that might come in on our fish. Because the hatchery is fed by the river, these fish are raised in round silos instead of concrete raceways. Now, this is very important. Whenever they feed the fish, they begin to run in a circle like a tornado. Right. So when you hook a fish on the Spring River and you hook up to him, first thing he does is start sw- swimming in circles. Now, this may not seem like much, but because they're not raised in a raceway swimming in one place, they're able to actually swim in a circle. Our fish are crazy. <laughs> when you hook up to one, they don't jump much. It's just pure adrenaline pumping. Just they're just on fire. I tell everybody when they hit a hit a trout and it doesn't, it feels like a really big one. That's the regular hatchery trout. They're more aggressive than our big holdovers. Really, okay. and it, it it makes them unusual. If you get a chance to go by Jim Hinkle Fish Hatchery, you got to check it out. The guys there are wonderful. They'll give you a tour of the place, and uh. Dam three is also our kickoff point. It's a great place to start floating the river from that point down. We're very lucky to have it in our area. Yeah, you are. That's a big deal. The spring is what's creating all of this too. That's why correct, people correct. are coming. That's why hatcheries are there. So where's your shop in relation uh, to where, where all the places you've been talking about? Are you on My the river? shop is just over the here, over the hill from Jim Hinkle. Okay. I'm about a mile south of Jim Hinkle on Highway 63. You drive by my fly shop, I got an overturned canoe. Huh. Now, you're going to have trouble finding anybody there. We guide full-time. We're always on the river. Uh-huh. So we're working on that. It's it's a really, truly a destination location. Uh, the people that come there are usually fishing with us. So we're working on creating more uh, things for fly fishermen coming to the area. Uh, we have a system where you just shoot us a text and we leave flies on the front box of the shop for people. We oh, get, yeah. It's a really nice area. We're just good old country boys like to make sure everybody has a good time. What's important is you come here and catch fish. Right. And, you know, it's a, it's about the experience. It's about people falling in love with the river that we've loved for years. And it's just a very unique river system. So what about food? 
let's talk about food just a minute. And I'm kind of going Ooh, off like on food. a tangent here. Let's talk about food. I always send I it. like food. It always ends up. I've, I've already talked about McDonald's and how bad their food are is down yeah, there. Terrible. How fat, yeah, it really food. is. But but I know every time we go somewhere, we end up eating at like a local restaurant. So Absolutely. We, let's we talk got about two that. great ones right on Main Street. So we're promoting catch and release up and down the river. Every time I see somebody keeping some, I say, hey, you got to go by Fred's Fish House on Main Street. They got walleye. They got catfish. I mean, it truly is a wonderful fish house to eat at. That's just probably a block down Main Street right there on the on the main stretch. And then uh, across from it is River Bend Restaurant. It overlooks the river. You can oh. sit on the back balcony and watch groundhogs eat your french fries. <laughs> It's a really unique place. Got the best breakfast you can imagine. Now we don't have many places to eat, but uh, Fred's State Line Restaurant is a new one that's just been reopened up on the hill. Uh -huh. It's got an excellent hamburger, fries, great place to eat. But we really push that Fred's Fish House. We're telling you, yeah. let them fish go. Go down there and get you some. They'll cook them for you. That is a great idea. Uh, yeah, and I was just on another podcast talking about another uh place that serves fish uh off of a little river up in east tennessee and now that i've now that you've said that i can start putting two to two and two together so i need to find there's actually a really good one uh on one of the lakes on one of the rivers that i fish below the dam of the lake and then the other one that has a marina on the other lake and they serve fish as well so i'm going to steal that from you uh awesome. and start directing them to that so maybe we can catch some of these fish again so you've got You've got two hatcheries right there. One is a, 120 years oldish, and the other one's about 50 years old. Uh, right. You've got some really, I mean, that's unique in itself. You've got one uh, spring that feeds basically both of those hatcheries. Then you've got some nice restaurants. So the area sounds really good, uh, like a really nice area to visit, plus the, a bunch of campgrounds, Airbnb. So now I'm starting to put together right. a trip in my head of, all right, well, Maybe I, I got to talk about on the way to the oh, white absolutely. and all that. I got to talk about Mammoth Spring. That, uh -huh. that town is such a small town. We have three police officers who are the nicest guys you ever meet. We walk up and down Main Street. It is truly Mayberry. And that's what we sell it at. We, we just <laughs> have a lot of good people that want to see people come up and have a great time. We've uh, been focusing on tourism in Mammoth Spring since the 1856, I think, is when they first started pushing it as a tourist destination. Uh huh. And everybody there's just super nice. We yeah. we wave at everybody still, so get used to it. Oh, that's my kind of. I like that. Yeah, definitely. So Hardy, how far is Hardy down from Mammoth Spring? About how many minutes is the drive? Hardy's about sixteen miles, probably a twenty minute drive. Okay. Uh, I believe from Mammoth Spring to Hardy River Miles is it's quite a trip. It's about twenty miles or so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so where does good. the cold water run out? Well, what, that's a good question. Mile? Now, it does run out for quite a ways. Down around Many Islands, is, which is about 12 miles down, It's during the summer months, it'll warm up quite a bit. Yeah. So that'll yeah. push the trout up. Now, during the winter months, we've caught trout in Hardy. During the winter months, the trout will come down. Okay. And uh, actually, the smallmouth will run up during the winter months. So it's... It's got trout all up and down it, but from Hardy up is definitely the trout waters. Uh, we don't catch many below Hardy. Yeah. But then you're yeah. getting into all smallmouth fishing. From what I remember about below Hardy, because that's, like I said, that's what I can sort of remember, was there's a lot of gravel down there. Yes, uh, yes. That, it's, a lot of, it looks like it's been out of its banks quite a bit down there and back absolutely. in. Absolutely. That sort of thing. Am I right on that? Absolutely. Definitely a river basin. Uh, from Hardy down is a lot calmer too. We do have some waterfalls, but nothing aggressive. Yeah. Uh, that area can flood very badly though, so you want to keep eye on flooding. But down there is some excellent fishing for spotted bass and for for uh, smallies. So, what can you tell us about the smallmouth specifically? Fly fishing for smallmouth. You know, what's the bottom like and wading, and how's the excess and floating, and what works and what did very similar to what we did in the trout piece. Can you do that in the smallmouth for us? Absolutely. Now, we do have uh, smallmouth all in the trout waters. They're kind of hard to catch up there because there's so many trout there. Mm -hmm. uh, I will definitely say there's a definite technique for catching our smallies. It's getting to the bottom and working it really slow. 
uh, I think you'd be better off throwing it something out there and just letting it sink. These fish on our river are, we used to fish the banks all the time, and we have some really large rocks up and down the river, and that's where the smallies are. As you float down that river, you see a big old rock, drop you a skull head or some kind of big streamer right there beside it, and just kind of draw it back. That's how you catch them. Mm -hmm. Now, once you get below the trout waters, uh, it, it gets a lot easier, actually. From Hardy down, you could do just traditional streamer fishing. The river's not as deep unless we're having high water. And it's a little bit easier to get at them. On the, from, I'd say, up from Hardy, from many islands to Hardy, is some of the best smallmouth fishing you can get. Uh, it's very hard to get access, but it's very, very deep. It took me a long time to figure out how to catch these smallies consistently because they're right on the bottom of the river. You're Like I said before, you're better off just uh, meat whistles, anything you can drag along the bottom that looks big and ugly. Uh, we, we're using clousers a lot, of course. Uh, yeah. If you The pink colors have been phenomenal. If we're not using pink, we're using olive. Uh, there are leeches in the river. Sometimes they'll key in on them. We got crawfish. They look like little lobsters. They got so much to feed on. But uh, we do have some big smallmouth. Uh, we've got more numbers than anything. Uh, they're not protected too much yet. We're working on getting better protection for them. A big smallmouth could be 10 plus years old. We don't want to see them harvested at all. Yeah, right. Because, you know, bigger is better. <laughs> <laughs> we always like the fightability. <laughs> but uh, it, it's, it's a unique fishery, just... It took me a long time to figure out not to focus on the shore, to focus more on the seams. Yeah. When you're looking for brown trout, you're looking for smallmouth on the Spring River. Yeah. Now, when you're not fishing that strong current and where the seams are, you're fishing for uh, warm water fish with the spotted bass, the panfish. I didn't realize how famous goggle eye were, rock bass. The locals oh, yeah. up here love catching them things. Yeah. It's about like a largemouth to me. I'm looking for a smallie. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i live for right it, it it is kind of hard to get accesses in some spot i will talk about one access it's pretty easy to get in and out of and that's from raven den to m boat we have two public accesses there where somebody could run a boat motor or something like that you, we run uh drift boats through it of course but uh it's got a good access it gets a little bit more pressure than some of these remote areas but the remote areas can be hard to get into now, we also have a lot of feeder creeks that run into the Spring River. We've got the Warm Fork that's up in uh, Mammoth Spring. We've got the Myatt that's about halfway down before you get to Hardy. And then a very important one is the South Fork of the Spring River. That runs into Hardy. It comes okay. uh, down from Salem, Arkansas, and runs through there. And that thing's full of smallmouth. Huh. Uh, the bigger ones are definitely in the river. But uh, sometimes we'll just, uh, as a kid, We'd, we'd wait up them rivers with a little Zebco and just catch our fish and just have a blast. Yeah. Once again, accessibility can be difficult. You got to be careful where you're at. The landowners do own the property. Now, the high water mark is wherever you see the water. And uh, you need to stay inside the water line unless it's a public access or you've got permission. So is it high water mark or the water? Wherever you see the water at, that's our high water mark. Okay, we, so we consider wherever it's at at that time. The high water the high mark. water mark. Okay. So you need to be standing in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'll keep you safe. You can't say nothing. They do not own the bottom of the river. Right. Right. But, you know, to be honest with you, everybody up here is super nice. If they realize you're just out fishing, having a good time, not leaving trash and stuff, they love fly fishers. You know, oh, we're good. stewards of the river. We take care of what we do. And they, a lot of people up here realize that. Nice. Okay. Um, so what about, have you tried any nymphing for smallies or anything like that? Or are you just strictly pretty much streamers on the bottom and around structure? Oh, no, nymphing can do real good. Yeah. Um, so I'm in a situation where i got to put people on fish, whether they can fish or not. Right. I've developed a new popper dropper technique. Okay. Now, don't judge me, folks. <laughs> just listen. This, what we're doing is a big popper, like a big hopper. Uh, some of my hop poppers look like little muskrats or little mice. And then I'll tie a large fly below it on a jig hook. And the other day, I'm not kidding y'all, we had a large mouth hit the popper and then a small mouth hit the dropper. Oh, That's okay. an easy way to fish the river. Throw it in toward the bank, let it kind of float down through there. And when that thing goes under, hang on. Now, of course, I like drop shotting, tight lining. 
fishing a heavy fly, let it get right down to the bottom and kind of just drag it along. Uh, smallmouth fishing on a river could be a lot like your old nymphing. It can be super, super productive. If you throw it out there, let it drop and try to just drag it back, you'll hang up a lot. The bottom of the river is very unique, just rocks and crags. If you're losing the fly, you're in the right spot. You're okay. doing the right thing. So take a whole bunch of flies. Okay. You lose a lot, but they almost always hit when it drops down in there. And the smallies on our river, you don't feel them hit so much as suddenly you're hung on a big log, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, we we also have some uh, buffalo and carp. And so be careful. Uh, usually when we're chasing smallies, we're running at least 12 to 15 pound tests because yeah. Yeah. a big old drum's fun, too. <laughs> you know, the buffalo, we, we have a buffalo run, which should be starting here in a couple of weeks. So I, I, I'm, I'm just as apt to just sit on a on some buffalo and, and fish them as I am some trout. They're but huge. Yeah. And they're so much fun and they fight oh. and they dig and they'll eat. Now, that's the thing is when they're yes, running, they'll yes. eat. Uh, they'll hit they'll a streamer. Hit a nymph. Yeah. They'll hit a streamer. Yeah, they'll hit a yeah. nymph. And I have talked about the black and gold clouser, uh, which we've been, we had, we've been using on the Caney uh, on downstream some, but you know, I know they hit other things, but I, you know, just getting them keyed in on the streamers, a lot of fun, but just floating a, uh, a mob fly at the right color they'll oh, eat yeah. those they'll eat eggs they'll eat everything when they're when it's time but and then Absolutely. the next day they may be completely gone from here like you won't catch one until <laughs> yeah. next year which is crazy yeah but we, yeah. uh we have yellow suckers in a river and that's uh -huh. a big one that runs up uh the baby yellow suckers is a big part of the, all the other fishes diet so it's oh, important to know okay. about that you're talking about uh black on the color you had we do a lot of black with a gold belly Mm -hmm. Maybe a tan with a gold belly, and they'll look just like them little yellow suckers. Okay, that's and they can hit those sometimes. That's a nugget right there. You know, if that's yeah, a, if that's yeah. something that the fish are going to eat, then then that's something that's worth knowing about and trying. Because we do have some folks that are more experienced, and they want a streamer fish. Absolutely, you know, it's just kind of their thing. And there's a lot of we got a lot of smallmouth, a lot of smallmouth <laughs> anglers. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so that's good to know. That kind of stuff is, is good to know. Um, uh, so are, is there a lot of waiting access down there or do, would you just fish it more from a boat or how would you do that below or from heart, let's say from Hardy below? I, I definitely say there's a lot of, uh, walk-in access points. We got okay. several parks in Hardy. You can just kind of wade down. Uh, there is a big stretch through Hardy town, about two miles. That's not a good fishery. Uh, it gets oh. fished too much. You want to oh, okay. go above Hardy, below Hardy. Okay. Uh, it's got a lot of weight in access points. Okay. But you, you, you could run a boat, but uh, we tend to wade fish when we go after them. But you said you drive, or you uh, you float down there too, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, the Raven Inn to Imboden trip is all floating. Okay. There's How two long public is that accesses. One? Oh, it's a long float, though. It takes us about eight to 10 hours. Okay. So it's so when got you, some of those, yeah. When you dive into that, you better be prepared. But there's <laughs> no waterfalls or anything. Okay. From, uh, Mammoth to Hardy, there's so many waterfalls. It's very unique. It's a class two riverway. So you want to be careful out there. But then once you get below Hardy, not too bad. Yeah. Just a small, small falls. It's a lot easier to go up and down to, through there. So the uh, above Hardy where the waterfalls are, would you take, could you take a hard boat there or do you have to take a raft? No, no, we have to use rafts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got into the fly crafts, stealth crafts. Uh, I'd say from Hardy down, it gets so rugged. There's so many waterfalls. Uh, I can't even get my drift boat down it, okay. not without tearing the bottom out. Yeah. So your so, fly uh, craft, what is it? What is it like floating down there? Is that like, is that a good It's pretty boat? smooth. Uh, it, it does really good. What you really have to worry about going up and down the river with anything is getting over the waterfalls. Uh -huh. uh, when the water is, it's all about water, how high the water is flowing. Right. And uh, that's why we always post it on our blog. If the river gets below 350 CFS, it's just tough to get down. Even the trout stretch can be a, uh, get, become a problem. But if the water's above 350 up to 400 CFSs, you'll slide right over the waterfall. Mm, okay. So yeah. a lot of our smallmouth fishing can be seasonal depending on water conditions. Okay. If the water gets too low, I can't get nobody down through there. It's almost inaccessible. Mm. So that keeps the pressure off of it. And that's why it's so good down through there. You know, right. there's always benefits to the downside of things too. Yeah. Okay, that makes. But a lot the more sense. and more I see with all these guys with these rafts, that is probably one of the best platforms to go up and down the river. It's very safe. 
Yeah, I've got a couple of friends that have stealth stealth craft ra- or stealth rafts. No, sorry. Yeah, stealth you know craft trick, and fly craft rafts. That's yes, the trick is not to own one, to have a friend that has one. Yes, I've learned that. I've got a hard boat, so you know, <laughs> yes. I've got, something I, I've got time behind the oars I can trade. <laughs> right, 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 right. But and I, I was actually just looking at a fly craft this afternoon. Uh, I don't know where I would take it that I can't take my boat, but right. I would, it would be cool to have one hanging in the garage. So that's the first Well, gotten on the spring really river. Like we that. almost all, we almost have to have a drift boat because it's more comfortable. It's a better uh-huh. platform, but we have to have a raft for when the water gets low too. Yeah. Or we may have to quit working. Right. So, you know. Right. So I guess, wow, that's a lot of information uh, to, to go through. Um, yeah, and I talk a little fast, so you know. No, we... oh no, you're fine. <laughs> that that's all good. Uh, backing up just for a minute, uh, you mentioned some of the different hatches uh, in the upper part of the river. Now we're going back upstream again, so bear right, with right. me here. Back on the trout. Yep, back on the trout. And you said you have caddis, mm-hmm. some caddis. Are you fishing dries there, off of those hatches? Those you know, caddis be honest hatches? with you. Not much, not much. They the the bait fish will rise to them dries a lot. Uh, you could catch a trout rising late evening to a dry fly. Uh-huh. But to be honest with you, I'd rather fish like a crackleback, fish it just below the surface during oh, okay. the hatch, uh-huh. and they will run that thing down and attack it. Okay. So, but I get a lot of guys that only want a dry fly fish, and they will hit a dry. But I'd say ninety plus percent is going to be subsurface, just right. because there's so much food in the river. Yeah, yeah. They don't have to go all the way to the top to eat, do they? They don't have exactly, yeah. exactly. Now we use peeping caddises. Uh I got a Mayfly merger. We got we definitely capitalize on the nymph side of this. Mm-hmm. And nymphing is what I love to do. I'm a big yeah. bamboo guy, so I like oh. stretching out the wood. Right, right, right. A lot okay. of fun. And it, it's to be honest with you, it's a simple river. And once you go through your flies of woolly boogers, nymphs, eggs, they're gonna hit something. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're not pressured as bad as in other places. So it, it makes for a fun experience and, you know, we're all living to watch a fish chasing them. So mm, that's what, yeah. that's what we're always looking for. <laughs> and being so shallow, you get so many opportunities to kind of, kind of get after the fish without having to fish deep water at all. And the trout stretches, it's very intimate. That so was one of the of things fun. that, that I thought was interesting about what you were talking about is the depth of the water isn't. Is it too much to where you're, you know, worried? I'm all right. I'm, I'm I can only fish this little section because this is as far as I can wait. It sounds like you can find a place because you because there's because it's relatively. Um, That's a good question. Shallow. Uh, you know, the problem with that is it all is highly weightable, but it is so slick yeah. you could be up to your waist and it'll it'll sweep you away. Uh, I would say most all of it is less than waist deep. Uh, we have deep holes below the falls. Right. But uh, that that's what will get you in trouble. You get out there, and the bottom has solid limestone shelves. And you get one on one of those. I've watched guys break dance right there in the middle of the river before they went under. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I've seen grown I've men it. hugging one another. <laughs> it just gets ugly. But, uh, but if you're careful, you know, the, the river's very small. You can walk along the edge of the shoreline and wade out just a short distance and fish all the pockets. You know, that's yeah. that's what I'd highly recommend. Don't just take off out through the river. Fish the water in front of you. Yeah. You know, uh, our our trout are easy to locate. They're always in that seam. Foam is home. Yeah. There's no other place they like to roam than in a foam. <laughs> and uh, that's where the trout are, the rainbows. The browns and the smallies are hugging them seams around the edges. You know, for me, it's an easy river to, to read. Okay. But it all looks good though, so be careful. <laughs> yeah, right. And I this is funny. I didn't I didn't tell this lady that I was guiding the other day uh, that we were doing this podcast. I don't I don't think I told her that. But we were talking about Arkansas and she says, Oh, I've been to the Spring River. It's so slick. Yeah. Uh, it's and dangerous. then I had a yeah, I had another lady talking about it kind of in the same uh this is on a, another trip, so I've had a couple ladies on that have both fished there, but they both kind of, one of them was like, ah, that's too slick for me. The other one was like, yes. yeah, it is slick. So. Yes. Definitely. And when it comes to guiding, uh, we do float trips, we do drift boats and rafts. Uh, 
I used to do weight in trips and, you know, you get a grown man says, I'm an expert waiter. I climb mountains and he shows up right. and he can barely walk out of the truck. Right. It can get right. dangerous. So uh, we prefer to do float trips down the trout stretches. But if uh, you're a young little mountain climber, you can go anywhere out there just like a little goat. Yeah. It's, it's, you can get places. I like, I like and, having people in the boat because they're there and you can, you can work with them. You can coach them. You can. It's safer for us. It, and it's safer. Yeah, it is definitely. But it's also a, to me, a better experience because you get to know them. You can't just say, well, we're going to go out here and wait for a couple hours and you know, I'm going to know right. you, you're not know me. It's more like you're in the boat for X amount of hours at a time. And we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to see a lot of different things. We'll see different water. We're going to see different. Right. We might be able to use different techniques that you're going to be able to take back home with you. Well, that's, that's a key point of floating the spring river. We, we come through some deep stretches. We come through some shallow stretches. We can go from tight lining to streamer fishing, to indicator fishing. You know, we're, we're all about having a good experience, whatever your yeah. uh, professional level may be. Now, of course, I become known for taking first timers. Uh, we get a big following from Memphis and, I tell you, if you've never done this before and you bring an expert spouse, I'll dang near it almost bet that you'll outfish oh, yeah, the spouse. Absolutely. Yes. It's an easy river to fish. Yeah. And it's just all about having fun without yeah. being too technical. Right. Right. And that that that's it's usually the guy, and I've said this a hundred times, if I've said it once. Usually the guy is like, Well, just just work with her. You know, yeah. just just yeah. Okay. okay. Halfway, you remember halfway you said that. Today. Yeah. 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 And Remember then they're wanting help. That. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to yeah. say, you be quiet back there where I'm working with her. You kind of do your own thing. Uh, I don't need, she doesn't need two coaches and I, I know she doesn't want one of them That's to be right. her husband. So I, yeah. I know it's hard for the husbands, but it's okay to be humble. Oh yeah. It's not, <laughs> but we all have to be that way at some point in our lives and well, not fess up and catch some fish, you know? Absolutely. And yes. just, just remember, she's going to be happy when she goes home. So it's yep. all good. Yep. Yep. Yeah. If you did your job, she'll, she'll find something to smile about. So. Absolutely. Well, we close these shows, Mark, with, with one question. We, we, we close these shows almost the same way every time when we're doing the interviews, what's the one question that we didn't ask about fishing the spring river, uh, that maybe we should have asked. You know, that's, that's a good question. I'll, I'll tell you what everybody asks me when they come up here. The question that everybody asked is how do you fish it? Uh, important thing is it's not a tailwater. You just got to really understand that. Uh, we have so much many more food sources. You really, you really wrap your head around that so you can find what they're hitting on. And uh, also just remember, it's not technical. You know, don't overthink it. Have a good time. Catch some fish. They do stock the river weekly. So there's mm -hmm. always fish out there. But I'm telling you that you guys looking for a big fish. We got holdovers that will just make you excited. And just when you do come up, look for a good experience. Uh, remember when we were waving at y'all, we're being friendly. It's not, we're not doing anything bad. <laughs> it, it's just an excellent river to learn from. We really enjoy having people come up that's wanting to learn. And we, I live to show people my river. I don't fish no more. I'd rather take somebody down the river, show them our eagles. We saw a big otter the other day, which I don't care for those, but he was yeah. pretty. Yeah. You know, it's so much about the experience. But the big deal is the, Bait sources in our river is so much different from a tailwater that I really would tell people to look into that. Uh, bait fish patterns, crawfish patterns, you know, different stuff like that would be very, very productive and very helpful when you're fishing a river coming from the North Fork or a different fishery like that. Because we are quite a bit different. Yeah. Just remember, don't worry about no sirens. If you hear a siren, it's just a police officer looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a damn generation or anything like that. <laughs> So we don't have to worry about that. And that's a big deal. You know, when a lot of times when the, the tailwaters are blowed out, people will come here. I've had several people tell me that they left their friends and come here by themselves. I've gotten a lot of trouble oh. from up the Spring River because it's a lot of people's personal river. You know, they come yeah. here to get away from everybody. And I'll tell you, during the week when you're floating our river, you may be all by yourself. But just remember, Sasquatch is out there. He's watching. <laughs> Yes. He'll get you. Yes. You know, the people that see Sasquatch, they see them more than once. Like, oh, I saw this yeah. one, and then I saw this, and I'm like, I've been out in the woods all my life, and I've never seen one. Now, why is that? You got people that are seeing multiple times, and yeah. then I'm not yeah. seeing one ever. 
<laughs> well, I live around hillbillies. Somebody done harvested one if there's really exactly. Sasquatch in this area. Now, exactly. on the flip side of that, my brother offered to wear a suit of a Sasquatch down the river. And I said, uh, we got hill folk here, son. Somebody yeah, shoot you. But right. don't do that either. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's not that is not a good idea. Yeah. But the Spring River is a very intimate river. If you're looking for a small chalk stream, uh, I, I, honestly, it's like a Western dream stream. Uh, we are fighting for better management. It's been a put and take fishery since I've been here. Uh, I think we're over that. Any, anything anybody can help us to get a catch and release area in our, our river. Uh, recently, I've been asked by EGFC to help with that. And we're, we're looking for a better fishery in the future. But it's, it's so good at this time. And it's only you know, going to get better. Yeah, if you can get some some rules and regulations and enforcement around that, that's that's a big deal. You almost need that with any trout fishery. Yeah, 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 for sure. But if you're looking for a good time, come up to Mammoth, a.k.a. Mayberry. <laughs> and we're just up to good old folks looking to have a good time. Uh, me and my guys are here to help anyone. If you got a question, you want help with anything, it is hard to get us on the phone because we are in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So text in and emails are the proper way to contact us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've learned that. I really texting, appreciate you. Texting the phone. Really appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, anybody I can talk to that fly fishes, you know, we do not do spin fishing. I am a uh -huh. fly fishing fanatic. That's all we do. <laughs> now, I had a guy tell me one time that I'd be a good spin fishing guy, and I told him to shut his mouth. I don't want to hear that because we, we are a little biased <laughs> on the fly fishing, but we fish mop flies. We fish everything. We're all about having fun. We're not too too hardcore. So you're biased on fly fishing, but not snooty. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. We're wanting to make it fun for the whole family. You know, when I first started, I ran into a few snooty old fellers that didn't want to help. And we, we definitely don't want to be like that. Yeah, I don't want to be Everybody like should that. be out there fishing. Absolutely. What do you say we, we uh, close the show out then? I, I appreciate you having me. I really All do. Right uh share the podcast with your friends and fishing partners if you can text it to somebody go ahead and text it to them and give them a little bit of information subscribe or follow so you'll be the first to know when an episode drops if you find value in the podcast and you want to give back uh just go to southeasternfly.com click on the store and make a purchase that's what pays for this um and if you make a purchase of a t-shirt or a hat you'll get a free decal too so who was our guest today on Southeastern Fly? He's the owner and head guide at Spring River Flies and Guides. He's been fishing the Spring River since he's a kid. I is what I'm getting out of our Forever. conversation today. <laughs> you can find him, Mark at um at www.springriverfliesandguides, spell out the and dot com. And uh Mark Crawford, thank you so much for coming uh this evening and talking with us. Really appreciate you. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. You just listened to Mark Crawford, Fly Fishing the Spring River on Southeastern Fly. See you next time.